Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here, and I'm super excited because in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of our new materials for motion graphics and some basic settings that you need to get the most out of them. It's a library of over 340 materials with a lot of cool functionality that I wished I had had when I first jumped into Unreal. So let's get to it. You may already have a project set up, and that's great if you do, but if you don't, um, let's say we start with a blank uh, film and video live events project, and so we'll choose blank there. We want to make sure we turn on ray tracing. If you haven't turned on ray tracing in your project, you can always go back later into your project settings and do that. But let's start this way. Let's turn on ray tracing. And then I'm just going to name this MM material materials intro. And then I'm just going to hit uh, create and it'll create wherever you keep your projects, right? And then the project's created. And here we are. And now, if you have downloaded the files, you'll see that you've got a folder called uh, content inside of these MoGraph materials. And inside of that, there's a folder called MoGraph materials and all of the stuff that goes into it. We're going to concern ourselves right now with just this MoGraph materials uh, folder right here. Then we're going to navigate over to the folder that we've got the current project file in. And so this is our Unreal project right now. And I'm going to go into the content folder right here. And I'm going to take this MoGraph material and either uh, drag it or just copy and paste. I'll hit Control C and uh, then Control V. And uh, we can see that the folder appears here in the content folder and it's copying. And you could probably just start working with these right away, but it may, they may not work properly until you restart. And depending on what we do next, we may have to restart anyway. So I'm going to go into my uh, project settings because these are some settings we have to change. And if I type in Ray... Let's go to ray tracing without the E right there. Just get to ray track, right? Um, what we'll see is we've got support hardware ray tracing. That's already turned on because we turned it on before we started the project. But if you hadn't turned it on, this is where you would do that. And you would need to restart here. Then I'm going to turn on ray trace shadows because certain materials like glass don't cast shadows unless you have ray trace shadows turned on. Then I'm going to type in clear coat. And there's just one setting right here, and that's clear coat enable second normal. This will allow us to have materials that have a clear coat on top of it with uh, another material below it that has normal maps. So this is important for some of the materials. Once we do that, we're going to be required to restart. Okay, so I saved my project and I've restarted. Now I'm just going to quickly show you what's inside of these folders and give you a heads up on anything you need to know just before starting. So we've got these materials here. If you go into the MoGraph materials, you'll see that there's a bunch of different folders. There's something called Megascans Examples, and Megascans Examples is uh, just some materials that I've brought in from Megascans as an example to show you how you might use some of these materials. They're not a major component. Um, we've got uh, MM Levels, and if we actually open this, what we'll see is all of the materials in one uh, project. So it's all materials seen. I'm just gonna double click to open this, and it will load up, and it's just gonna take a moment to load all these materials. And so here, if you wanted to do sort of like a walking tour of these materials, you could see what some of these look like. And you can get an idea of like looking through things like, you can see some of the animations that are on the neons, for example. We can see, you know, the glass materials that are here. If you don't want to look in this project file, you don't have to. You can just go start looking through these folders. So we've got these uh, MM materials folders. And if we go into there, we've got our master materials. And these are the materials that all of the other materials are based on. Don't mess with these. Leave them alone. There's no good reason to mess with these materials and make changes to them. Any change you make to one of these will proliferate to any of the materials for which these are based on. So leave them alone. But we've got a whole bunch of other materials in here. So let's go into different folders. We've got glass colored, which unfortunately over a black background, you can't really uh, see, but you can read the description of them. We've got uh, glass frosted, and these are basic uh, different kinds of glass effects with frosted glasses. It may take a moment for them to load as we jump into the folder for the first time. You've got uh, frosted glass um, path tracing. And these are meant to be used with path tracing, not the normal renderer that we're in right now. So we'll leave that for a tutorial on its own. Um, we've got an imperfection folder. And this is uh, these are materials that are designed to work with either Quixel imperfections or imperfection files from those like the pixellab.net and you can just uh, use them to create really cool materials that have different kinds of imperfections in them. We've got LED materials, and this one we're gonna have to like look at it a tutorial, but basically if you wanted to create an LED screen that you get close to, this is a great tool for that. We've got uh, painted metals, and this is going to be, again, we're gonna cover all this in a separate tutorial. 
There's uh, patterned metals, and I've you know done my best to give close-ups of these so that you can see what they look like. We've got uh, metals that are textured. I'll give it a moment to load, and you can see that these are different kinds of textured metals. And we've got uh, metals transparent, so they've got you know different transparencies for different kinds of grates or things like that. And then we've got neons, which are, uh, these are just the color ones, but if we go into this section right here, feature examples, you can see we've got different materials that are like neon fading or neon flickering. And we'll go into that in the neon section that we do. We've also got uh, plastics, and these are pretty cool, um, including subsurface scattering materials. And then some of my favorites here, the retro reflective uh, materials that are really, really cool. Now you'll also find a folder here called MM Material Functions, and like the master materials, you want to leave these alone. These are used to create some of the things like the animation on the neon and different kinds of functionality like the chromatics. If you mess with these, the materials may stop working, so leave them alone, but they're here uh, as a part of the material package that need to be here. And then let's hop over to the MM Textures folder where all the textures are kept. And this is a great moment to thank Ambient CG and sharetextures.com and thepixellab.net for allowing me to include some textures as a part of this package to help make the materials as good as they could be. And let's just wrap this up really quickly by showing you just a few things. There's Chromatic Atlas, and this folder has the different kinds of chromatic effects that are used in our chromatic effects. So you can uh, add if you want. You have to kind of go into this thing. Maybe I'll cover another tutorial, but you know, that's how you do that. There's also uh, different textures for the LEDs, the metals, things like that. Um, the thing I really mostly wanted to show you is that we've got some pattern maps, and these are basic building blocks for a lot of the materials. So when you're looking at the retro reflective materials, what you're seeing are actually these normal maps that I've created. And I tried to think of as many cool shapes and different kinds of things that you could use. And you basically use these to change any material. If you add them to the materials, they'll give it a different look depending on what you're adding it to. There's also the transparency map. And this is a place where we have a mix of a normal map and a matching transparency map so you can create like metal grates and things like that. If you have a material that you love, but it's got this material, this kind of uh, texture, and you want maybe this one, so you just swap them out. So you've really got the building blocks for whatever you want to make. Finally, the last thing I want to mention is something that you're going to see in every material that's included in this package, which is that all of the materials are by default using triplanar projection instead of UV mapping. So basically, if you apply it to an object, no matter what kind of UV map it has, it's going to evenly place the texture all around. It avoids things like pinching, or if something's got very bad UV mapping, or for some things are small and some things are big, this will make everything nicely evenly laid out. So if I were to go down to the bottom here and I turn on Use Object UVs, if we look down here, we can see that now it's being projected based on the UV map, which in this case is pretty stretched out. So it's probably not something that we would want to use in a case like this. So we'd want to use triplanar. Another great place to look at this is like on a sphere, right? So a sphere that's using UV mapping, right? A sphere is by, by default, see how it kind of pinches up at the top. If I come back to this material and I turn off use object UVs, well, it's more evenly placed. Of course, you can sort of see a seam where the different directions are coming together, but depending on what you're doing, you might want to use one or the other. Finally, when using 3D text in Unreal, um, what I've found is that uh, it can be stretched if you're not using triplanar. So take a look. If I turn on uh, Use Object UVs here, and we take a look, you see that this texture got really small on front, but back here, it's kind of stretched out. So this helps avoid these kinds of problems. And so by default, it's like that. If you don't want your material applied that way, you just pop in like I did. You turn on triplanar by just turning off use object UVs like this. Now at this point, if you wanted to just use the materials as they are and not get into them and make changes and use some of the really cool functionality and things like neon, for example, then you can just stop watching videos and start applying and having fun and exploring that way. But if you want to get to know how to use each of these different materials, and some of which have some really cool stuff inside of them, you should watch the videos, or at least once you've played around a little bit and want to get a little more out of them, drop in and watch some of the videos to see how each of these materials work. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.